Thank you very much, Richard, for uh, allowing us to do this video with you and, and have a conversation about Jamaica. My pleasure. You are now the governor of the Bank of Jamaica. Are you still in your honeymoon period? Is now three months? No, I think that's done. It's three months today, actually. Right. But the honeymoon period was finished about two weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I've known you for many years. We used to have like a yearly sit-down meeting, and I never pictured you becoming the equivalent of our Ben Bernanke. Yeah, I, I would say I didn't picture myself doing it either. Um, but when the opportunity arose and I thought about it, I think the love of doing something for the country pulled me to it, and um, that was a deciding factor. Okay, well, we, we know about patriotism and we know that you were also co-chairman of EPOC, yes. the Economic Program Oversight Committee yes. that was very instrumental in Jamaica executing our IMF agreement and, and being such a successful case study. Yeah, uh, the, the, what EPOC did for Jamaica was create a transparency between what was happening technically and what the ordinary man in the street uh, saw and heard. And that transparency created a little uh, uh, commitment to the program because people felt, well, okay, some non-governmental uh, set of people are uh, explaining what is happening and they seem fairly confident. Wasn't very confident at the beginning, more and more <laughs> confident. Um, and so they themselves drew confidence from it. Uh, so it played a role in that respect. So, so as you talk about confidence, I want to get into the first question I had to ask you. If you look at Jamaica's economic performance since yeah. 1962, we, we were doing well, and then we eventually underperformed a lot of other emerging markets, a lot of countries. But since our IMF deal, we've actually had essentially record economic growth. We're doing a lot better. We have low inflation. That is, is amazing. And the bank itself is an independent central bank and also the regulator of the local financial industry, but why are we focusing on inflation targeting? There are a lot of people who don't understand even what that means. Well, uh, through inflation targeting, we can uh, contribute to growth. When we bring interest rates down, low, it means that uh, a lot of businesses can borrow money more cheaply, individuals can borrow money more cheaply, and on that basis, they will invest or they will buy and that will stoke economic activity. Uh, so our way of contributing to, to growth is through inflation targeting, easing money uh, uh, conditions. Um, and we measure the inflation, of course, through the CPI. Right. right? Um, and you need a little inflation to get growth going. Right? So when we lower rates, we get a little inflation, but we get growth. And that's what our objective is. And, and so the target is to get us above 5% growth. In the past, we had some bottlenecks, we had some issues, but we, that debt overhang has no... Well, the debt overhang has been considerably reduced from about 147% down to the last number I heard was 94 or right, somewhere wow. like that. And that's a massive accomplishment uh, when you think we did it in an environment where we didn't do any haircut to debt. Um, it would probably be the first experience the IMF has had of that kind of road to recovery. Uh, and so Jamaica has become quite celebrated in that respect. Um, but we have a way to go. We've got to get it down to about 60%. And at 60%, uh, government's tax revenues can play a bigger role in driving economic growth for us. Okay, and so I like that you brought up the fact that the BOJ can contribute to economic growth. One of the things we've seen, and, and the central bank has been hosting a number of events. We had one recently where I was talking to you, and that with SME financing. So interest rates are coming down, but we know that there's a, a massive opportunity for SME, some two plus billion Jamaican dollars of funding gap yeah. to get financing to SMEs. How do we get that financing to them there? Or is it coming and we just not seen it as yet? It's yeah. not as public. Right. It's coming, but coming more slowly than we would want. Uh, but just look at it logically. Uh, when we get the exit of government out of the debt market, uh, the banks have to lend to the private sector more and more. They're going to start with the very best customers. Uh, because that's a low-hanging fruit. Right. Uh, so they have loaned to them aggressively 
and at rates that are very attractive for them. Big business in Jamaica is a static over the interest rates. Then the banks are focused a little bit further down into the mid-tier companies and they are lending them also aggressively. A lot of competition down there and those rates are coming down too. They have to deal with the SMEs also if they want continued growth. Um, and so we find that the credit is leaking out into that uh, sector uh, more than before. However, we have a problem in the sense of uh, Onboarding and knowing your customer is a big problem in Jamaica because we don't have any unique identification number system. Right. Uh, so it's a bit onerous to onboard people coming out of the informal sector. We recently made two significant adjustments to our MLCFT legislation in Jamaica. Uh, and what that is going to do is allow the banks to be more flexible in how they onboard small, medium enterprises. Right. Okay. So the same KYC that they have been using for big, high quality customers, they were using for SMEs. Now the new legislation allows them to look at it more flexibly and set a different set of KYC standards for them. We expect that out of that, the, the, uh, inclusion of SMEs in the market will be easier. No, so I'm very glad to hear that because I, as you know, I worked at a financial institution here in Jamaica and, and our, our Know Your Customer Rules anti-money laundering. It was so hard to onboard companies. So I'm very glad to hear legislation is coming and that we're going to be able to facilitate financial inclusion. So if you got a chance to sit down with some overseas investors, say in New York, for example, what would you be saying to them to encourage them to be looking at Jamaica for investment? Well, the fundamentals in Jamaica are pretty good and they are getting better every day. And that's, that should be crucial in the mind of every investor, that they are coming into an economic environment where the, the basic tenets of stability are being improved on every day. Fiscally, we're getting uh, closer and closer to a, a, a reasonable debt to uh, GDP ratio. From a monetary point of view, we have uh, legislation in Parliament to make Bank of Jamaica independent. Um, we have a fiscal council coming in maybe about nine months time. These are fundamental institutions that Whilst governments will come and go, these institutions remain and they will be the foundation for stability. So an investor coming here uh, will know that we have not just the will uh, with the current government or a future government, but we have the institutional uh, ramparts in place for stability. Okay, so, so high confidence is... Absolutely. I mean, I've seen investors go into countries with less good fundamentals than Jamaica. And ours just keep getting better with each passing quarter, each passing year. Well, also, and I'm glad to hear that. That's exactly what I would say to people. I want to touch on a topic that we, we don't tend to hear about in the media. But we've seen Eastern Caribbean, some of the central banks on that side, started to experiment with digital currency. They might mm -hmm. be looking at cryptocurrency. We all have different ways to think about that, but is there any plans on, on the BOJ side to start looking at or are our experiments already taking place and you're just not publicizing? Uh, yes, uh, we have had a number of payment systems that have uh, been implemented in Jamaica. Uh, they do moderately well, not as, as explosive as we'd like to see them do. But my attitude at Bank of Jamaica is to welcome all kinds of fintech. We want to see it, come and show us. Um, we're not going to be saying no at the door. We want to say, come in, let's examine it together. Indeed, we have a policy that says, let's set up sandboxes where you can test all of those ideas. Right, so if next week somebody walks into Bank of Jamaica and says, I have this idea, this FinTech uh, uh, product, I would say, come sit with our people let us work out how you can set up that sandbox and start practically to prove it to you and to us that it is workable and that it is prudent. 
So I'm smiling because it kept using the word sandbox, which is such a tech entrepreneur term, and uh, that shows that you are with the times. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They don't mean a soundbite. I can promise that. So, so we are very glad to hear about it because I live in the U.S. now, and to have seen Kenya and M-Pesa and that transition with mobile money, and I just felt that we had so many of the same problems in Jamaica, yeah. similar problems. We could be an R and D hub. You could test in Jamaica. Yes, and we 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 are taking a proactive stance. And I'm not, not only am I welcoming any fintech uh, uh, entrepreneur, but we are actively pursuing the establishment of a national payment switch. So th this is a, a kind of hub and spoke where all existing mobile payment systems and new can speak to each other. We feel that like that is fundamental to have a. A, a good, efficient national payment system. Okay, so that reminds me of when I designed, I was part of the team, I was in charge of launching our internet banking, banking platform for that firm here in Jamaica. And we created a common component is what it, we call it, so that mm -hmm. everything else could talk to this one entity. It sounds like that's exactly what you're doing, which... Exactly. Oh, um, that's great. Well, so are there any other topics that you wish to cover and make sure people know Jamaica is a place to be considered investing? Don't just look at China, India, Sri Lanka. You need to be here. Yeah, well, I mean, there are some industries that we have proven ourselves in that we have a competitive advantage in. I mean, every year, more and more hotels open in Jamaica, big growth industry for us. We know that business very well. Indeed, in the last two years, Jamaica is a star performer yes. in in the whole Caribbean tourism area, um, but not just tourism. Uh, we have a, a, a recently we have had a very big energy investment in Jamaica, yes. and we have a policy that we want to have um, energy production beyond just heavy fuel oils, uh, and I think we're somewhere in a region of about thirty to forty percent being provided by wind, being provided by solar. Uh, and there's more space for that. Um, also, I think we have a great port, great harbor, and that's always an opportunity for transshipment. Right. Uh, Logistics. Yeah. But apart from that, you know, generally we in Jamaica are continuing to improve doing business. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a long road to trek, uh, but we are on that road. I think we've made good progress in the last five or six years, but there's more to do and we are very sensitive to getting that done. We watch our rating on, in the World Bank rankings very very closely um, and we jealously guard our position there. Um, so I think you'll find that we have a business environment that is getting more and more open, more and more uh, available and willing to um, accommodate investors. Well, I'm glad to hear that it sounds like we are very much open for innovation and outside capital. Absolutely. So to, to close it off then, I would, I would want to say as an overseas investor, the, the most important concern we tend to have is how do we get back our money? Yes. And Jamaica has been very safe in, in that sense. Do you think that's very much going to continue? It's going to even improve? Yeah. When you look in the region, particularly in the Caribbean, um, Jamaica is the most advanced in respect of liberalization of foreign currency. Um, to the point now where Jamaican US dollars are funding other Caribbean territories, business ventures. Uh, we always had, we've had that for many years and we continue to improve on it. Um, what we are striving to do now is to urge the uh, uh, foreign exchange dealers to develop new products, forward swaps, to smooth out the exchange market so that we don't have too much volatility. We'll always have some ups and downs, but uh, we always want to people to be a, a, have a, a, um, access to their funds, and we want to have some relative stability, lower volatility in the rate going forward. So even as we speak, I'm awaiting a report from the dealers to say, we have started this business of forward markets, here is our proposal. I think that is key in allowing not just the usual end user access to foreign exchange, but more and more the uh, portfolio investors 
uh, and Jamaica is becoming like a center of financing for portfolio investments. So since you bring up the whole center of financing and our portfolio investments, most of our overseas investors understand Cayman and, and what they've done there, what Bahamas has done. Uh, they were talking in the past about Jamaica becoming a financial center, an offshore financial center. Is that, is it that we're not really becoming a true offshore financial center, but that's what we are actually becoming by design because we're already so involved, or you wouldn't call it a financial center? Right. I don't. I don't. I think we we are kind of of um, stepping in that direction, but not not through. Uh, um, policy and right. being driven in that direction but it's naturally happening and that's a good thing uh, it's saying that there is an opportunity there and the private sector is pushing out and searching for this new uh, opportunity it, it's for us to study it and to see how can we if it has if it has good legs let us see how we can promote it uh, and make sure that it is stable uh, um, Okay, so thank you very much. I want to say, close with saying one thing to some overseas Jamaicans, and and then we can close it off. Well, uh, your country is getting better and better every day. Um, you don't have to just listen to us. Listen to the multilaterals when they speak about us. Speak to the investors who are here already. Um, Jamaica is a good place for you to enter now, because tomorrow and the day after will just be a better and better destination. All right. Thank you very much, Richard. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, this. David. All right, then. Bye.